got a recording started. Uh, I'll get off Craig and then I'll hand over to you. So thank you everyone for joining in uh, today, Realize Operations Manager webinar series. Uh, today we'll be delivering our second episode of 2017. Uh, I have been kind of slow in this year because we started late, but I promise that we have a lot of new content coming in uh, for this year and even more exciting new features of VR ops coming in, how we can use them on a day-to-day -day basis as use cases for our customers. So uh, stay tuned for all the new releases or new episodes which are coming up. For today, we'll be talking about full stack monitoring with VR ops, where we'll see how we can extend VR ops beyond uh, just the vSphere infrastructure and monitor everything from applications to infrastructure and give that full line of sight in how your applications are performing and how users are impacted if they're not performing, so on and so forth. Uh, let's take the next slide. Our housekeeping items, it's kind of grayed out, but we'll do a question and answers at the end of the session. So usually try to follow that, uh, but if you have any burning questions, use the chat window. And uh, we have three people over here with me, supporting me, helping me to answer those questions and we'll make sure that we answer each and every one of those. And if you have questions at the end, we'll probably keep around 10 minutes to answer those. Uh, it is getting recorded, so if you have something for which you have to jump off, uh, don't worry about it. We'll make sure that the recording reaches to you in the next uh, day or so. All the pens who've just joined uh, are on mute by default. We use this just to make sure that our recordings are clear and uh, you can use them later on and review them. If you have a question, though, you can use the chat window. An important thing is feedback. If you give us feedback on how we are doing and how and future sessions you want to listen into about VR ops and related technologies, we'll be happy to uh, incorporate those in the future sessions. So that's the survey link. We're also sharing that survey link at the end of the session. So uh, please provide your feedback, and we'll be happy to listen in and, and make sure that we can improve. Uh, next slide. Rani, I work for VMware as a senior member of technical staff uh, in the VRAPS group. Uh, with me, I have Simon Eby, who works for ExtraWord. He's a senior consultant there who typically works with customers on a day to day basis, uh, implementing some of these technologies which we discussed during our webinars. Uh, we both started this series back in 2016. And we're lucky to have partners uh, within VMware and outside of VMware who would probably come in and, and contribute to this series or a community event so everyone, everyone could benefit out of uh, what they are doing, their customers. And today, on the next slide, you could see that we have Craig Lee, who is the Chief Systems Architect at Blue Medora, who is one of the partners of VMware, and uh, Brock Peterson, who is a Solution Architect for Blue Medora. And uh, basically, we were discussing over Twitter that how we can go ahead and give some more uh, insights to our customers and our audiences into how we can look at uh, VR ops and use it not only for VSA infrastructure, but use this platform to, uh, to go ahead and look at everything what you have in your data center and monitor it. And uh, then we decided that there could be certain use cases which we could uh, would share, which we have experienced with customers. We've actually seen those problems and we solved that with me, Blue Medora, and VROPS together. And that's what we are going to talk about today. And that I will hand over to Craig. Uh, all yours. You want to introduce yourself further or, or sure. you can go ahead and slide? Hello, my name is Craig Lee. I'm the Chief Systems Architect over at Blue Medora. So I've been with Blue Medora since the very beginning and uh, been a part of watching it grow. And so with that, we've been expanding our monitoring expertise to all the various layers of the actual application stack. And really, at the end of the day, um, what we're talking about from a full stack monitoring perspective is, is, is uptime and really trying to keep those, those production applications operational. Uh, would you like to say a little bit about yourself? Sure, Craig. Uh, I'm Brock Peterson, a solution architect with Blue Medora. I've been with Blue Medora for roughly a year now. I have a couple decades of experience uh, with a uh, large IT firm uh, in the market. So uh, with that, we're going to go over uh, today's agenda, and then we'll just dive right in. So we're going to be talking about really what what defined by full stack uh, monitoring within vRealize operations. And again, it's about enabling uh, production uptime, really looking at all different aspects of your environment 
that we define uh, uptime overall and really contribute to keeping your, your users productive and operational. So thinking about things such as storage, compute, networking, databases, load balancers, whatever it is, and our, our, our concept and our overall goal is to really make VROPs to be the primary uh, level of monitoring and management where it's the, really a one-stop shop where an admin could go. So how we're going to do that today is we're looking at some various use cases and have a couple purpose-built demo environments around that. So our first one's going to be around a traditional vSphere stack uh, hosted on, on NetApp, um, looking at Oracle database workloads. So with that, we can look at things such as query identification, so looking at the query level to find those queries and find the thing that's really affecting performance and slowing things down. We'll also end-to-end -end monitoring to really see what is contributing to cause that particular query to run slow and then what is the impact of that. And then using the analytics and, and the, the information gained from looking at things such as the actual SAN layer around capacity planning to make sure that our environment can really may, meet our growing needs as an organization and show the value of what, what, it, uh, of what we can contribute for looking at the storage layer and really looking at plan, planning for the future. Uh, this case is going to be around something that's a little more cutting edge. So we're looking at, at the hybrid cloud scenario. So Amazon, Amazon RDS, and other database workloads, and particular challenges around uh, a hybrid cloud either migration or using hybrid cloud to supplement what is already in your vSphere and in your on-prem data center. And we're looking at end-to-end -end -end monitoring across clouds and look at what is possible when, once we extend vRealize operations, look within those places. But also with that, there's a particular uh, um, element of complexity and perhaps even risk by spreading your data all over the world. And how do we mitigate that within VROPs? So there's some geolocation use cases. Um, and we're going to go ahead and kind of summarize things and really show uh, what it will to get you enabled and take, for you to take the next steps. And it's looking at things such as the VMware Solutions Exchange portal and looking at what kind of offerings are there for within your environment. I'll give a demonstration on basic installation and configuration of Manager Pack and really show you how easy it is to get started. And finally, look at some of the other uh, um, additions to the vRealize platform, such as VMware Login Insight, Endpoint Operations, and VRB. So first, we're talking about this, and this is kind of looking at a theory overall and looking at, uh, at, at, at IT monitoring at a very high level. So within um, traditional uh, IT management and IT monitoring tooling, um, you may have very specialized tools. Some examples of these may be IBM Tivoli, Microsoft SCOM, uh, perhaps things such as uh, Oracle Enterprise Manager or EC Unisphere. So they're very purpose-built. And with that, that tends to create silos. So uh, these are offered as, uh, as what are called element managers. Uh, so these may be something as simple as the admin way for the router to something as complex something like EMC Unisphere that can monitor multiple surveys and some of the connections and some performance information. But it really focused on either the break-fix scenario, administration, and really correlating things together. Theory around vRealize operations and really what it, what it brings in the, the actual power that it can enable the, the, the TOA landscape to allow those silos to be broken down and really allow cross-functional teams to add a lot of those finger-pointing type scenarios. So the idea is that if we can bring everything together and with power of relationships and looking at how the data relates to each other, um, we can start demonstrating some values. So that's, that's kind of how VROPS is, is positioned overall and what its value props are. So this actually, uh, how, how VMware starts to, to look at this from their offering standpoint. And we have v really operations in the middle that span between compute, storage, and hybrid cloud. On the network and security side, so looking at more of the network details, there is vRealize Network Insight, and vRealize Login Insight spans all of this, and VRB as well. But we add manager packs, and we start pulling all this together, uh, we can show full application visibility within vROps, and I'm also going to, at the end, demonstrate some of the correlation between vRealize Business and Login Insight, which can also pull into vROps, where vRealize Operations will really become your, 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 your first destination and ultimately your final destination when it comes to looking at troubleshooting of your environment and looking at things like workload. So, let's see action. Okay, case one, so we're talking about query level monitoring of an Oracle database, and uh, we're going to be looking at our environment overall. Uh, ultimately, we're going to uh, drive into a full stack dashboard with a customer scenario, and also look at planning for the future. So, I'm going to jump over to my demo environment. Okay, so this is our demo environment. Sorry, let me keep it 
house here. Um, within our demo environment, this is a VRealize operation system with many management packs installed on it. I'm going to show you uh, what our environment looks like and give you a bit of a tour. So what we have here is typical of a, a mid-sized IT operation. Uh, this happens to be a Oracle stack, but everything I'm talking about could also apply to MySQL, Microsoft, Postgres, whatever it happens to be. And what we've done is we've actually used a lot of the concepts that, that are in some of the previous VROPS webinars, things around day two operations. Well, you should be taking your, your application stack or your production app and really breaking it apart into the various tiers and, and, and ultimately the, the various pieces of infrastructure that really make up that application stack. The thing that you gain is that you can see health, risk, and efficiency, and it will roll up from everything monitored beneath it all the way up into the app stack itself. What's really interesting, when we start adding in management packs, which are extensions for VR ops, we can start adding in other objects so not just the virtual machines and data stores that we have here from the built-in uh, VR capabilities, but also things looking at the actual SAN level. And I have to be talking about NetApp quite a bit because that's what I have in my environment. But things like Nimble, there's also monitoring for HP out there or IBM storage or EMC, whatever that happens to be, will also slot in and, and will give you that same kind of value I'm going to show. And with the base, I'm showing the actual Oracle database servers and the database server instances themselves. So it makes a production there. And I've, I've even brought out uh, the actual VM itself. So again, it's about categorizing what's here. And what's cool about this is when I go ahead and click on a category, I can see if there's any alerts or risks. And to hear things like tier risk is elevated, tier efficiency is degraded, and we could start to, to uh, drive into these. And I can see here that there are some uh, particular alerts coming off the database itself. So um, what I like to do is have recommendations and alerts based on a lot of best practices wherever we're possible and databases are a great use case for that so here we have uh, we're noting that lo archive logging is disabled and so here's some online log files with less than two copies so what we're doing is we're telling you some practices around administering an Oracle database server and help you see if there's any risk at that particular level. Also bring in hardware as well so here we have have the yes server blades. This happens to be Cisco UCS, but again, Dell, HP, IBM, anything else um, that could be monitored with VR ops via manager packs or even natively um, could be slotted in here, and then ultimately down to the VMware host itself. So a bit of a walk through. This is your typical 3-2-1 type application. So we have the app servers, we have storage, uh, database, and UCS. So we're monitoring everything across the board. Now what do we do with it? Let's go ahead and talk about that. In our scenario, in our mid-sized company, we perhaps have a, a email-backed uh, um, uh, application, line of business application, where we have an email server that is backed by a particular database itself, and based on the speed of the database queries, that will allow for emails to be processed at a certain speed, or CRM, or whatever we want to have there. So what I'm, is, I'm actually going to show you what we're bringing in from the Oracle uh, database manager pack. And the, all the different instances that are hosted on our monitored uh, systems is actually showing you that the health badge is being affected for some of these systems. And you see yellow here. So this is using some, some KPIs that are, are, are broken out and using the, the analytics engine within vRealize operations to determine if there are any health issues. I'm going to go ahead and go to my OEM 12C system. I'm going to highlight this. And then I see things and look at the slowest query. So here we're looking at our top 10 slowest queries and in what they're slow and what they're being uh, uh, weighed against are things like average time, execution, and I.O. wait time. What I like to do actually is, as, a, as a full stack administrator is look at the user I.O. wait time. So you can see that over the course of the executions, the I.O. wait time for this particular query was 20.99 minutes, very high. So there's a lot of delay because of storage. That's what it's really indicating to me. And then I can see what the actual query text is, too. So it's actually highlighting that. So great is, is you, as the, as the cloud admin, as, as the actual infrastructure admin, uh, not something to go to the actual database administrator with. And we can even look at, here are our top queries that are slowing things down or are performing slowly. And we can, with this information, be able to go to the application owner or the developer, whoever that may be, and actually tell them, hey, uh, looking at our environment, here, is, here are the queries that are running the slow perhaps some efficiencies that we can gain and really give us those tools to really start uh, communicating across silos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is Sunny here. So just a, just a quick question around this. So, so 
So essentially, when I go to customers and, and I show them capabilities uh, uh, such as these, uh, the question is uh, mostly that how do I build these? So basically, the IT team or the IT admin might not be the full stack engineer, right? So there is the database admin who's sitting uh, and who knows what these queries would be. So what are your recommendations around that? So is this an out-of-the-box dashboard, or or if you have this, then for, for a customer, let's say there are a lot of customers who are today on the webinar, and they would want to know that how do they go and do that collaborative effort uh, to get the right set of data over here, which matters, because that's that challenge, right? That's a knowledge challenge. It's not a tool challenge or a process challenge. So how do you recommend people to do that? Uh, excellent question. Um, in fact, what I'm showing here, it's a kind of an easy answer. It's actually a, 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 a out-of-the-box dashboard. So uh, when, I, when I go to the dashboard list, uh, everything you see in the Oracle database, so health investigation, IO ops, um, we can show some of these off later, and even table spaces, mm -hmm. all out-of-the-box. So these are going to be here by default. So once you get this hooked up to your, your Oracle database, it will start basically returning what I'm showing you here automatically. The one area for, yeah, the area for configuration is here we're only showing our 10 slowest queries, and perhaps what we're seeing is not within the, the top 10 slowest, but within the top 100 or the top 50. That is also configurable. Okay, awesome, awesome. So basically you're saying that uh, I can use what is out of the box, but I can also go and sit with the database admin and say, hey, database admin, I have a tool now. I can, I can monitor the query level. But you tell me what are the most important queries for the application which, which you're running. Let's say in this case it's email. And then they can sit together and quickly configure this to show what they want to see. And if any of those are on a high wait time, then you'll be able to identify quickly. Okay? Correct. Yep, yeah, because we're talking about I.O. wait time, this really indicates to us that, that us as the as looking at it as a vSphere or infrastructure admin, perhaps we need to look at the data store side and look at the actual SAN side of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, sorry to interrupt you, but just, just wanted to, because I'm the technical guy, so just want to understand that. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. So with, the, uh, with the, the query selector widget, it's another way of visualizing this. So we've broken out the large squares by database instance. And he, uh, the, 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 the things in red are the ones that have uh, the very high average time. So the average time to actually complete the queries was, is very high. Um, so for example, on this particular one, 26.39 seconds. So you can see that there's a lot of data being read and written. Um, what I like to do is looking at overall execution so I can look at what are the most popular queries. So this is the most popular query here, and it's been executed 835 times. This, so looking at this, could be uh, ha perhaps used to troubleshoot a report or a scheduled job that's running for a very long time but just can't complete, or is scheduled to run very, very often. For example, with this particular query, it is now reading 412 gigabytes of data through, throughout all of those, those, those particular executions, those 835 times. So that's that you could also look at and have a conversation around um, efficiency with with the Oracle DBA, perhaps. That makes sense. Yeah, I use it. I mean, I can see various you know top level use cases which will come into individual problems which you're trying to show through these dashboards. So this is excellent. Thanks for this. So this this is more of at a, a a individual and more of at a detail issue. Um, so we're, we're very detail oriented dashboard and we're looking at the database. So now, what does it look like when we start integrating in other manager packs or other things monitored within vRealize operations? And here, what we've done is we have actually created a dashboard that has multiple manager packs. And what I've done in the titles is just to highlight what manager pack it happens to be coming from. So with Oracle Database instances, that's coming in from the Oracle Database Manager Pack. This is the Boomador Manager Pack. Um, and from here, I can click on any of these database instances being monitored, and I see things like I/O for performance calls, executions per second, DB wait time. There's a lot of KPIs. But if I click through, it, it changes the relationship between the data instance and then the, the actual uh, VM it's related to. So through the power of relationships, we can go from basically the work side to what is the next piece of infrastructure that it's hosted on, and ultimately, what is the entire application stack look like? So, Chris, I'm, 
to take you back to the original question, you you found a query which was uh, which was taking a lot of time. So how do you relate it back to? Uh, and you said it's because the I/O weight, so it's because of storage. Yep. Relate it back uh, that to a particular storage device uh, or a particular database, as you mentioned. Sure, uh, excellent question. So here we have high uh, DB wait time ratio for the database overall. We have uh, uh, I/O called out here, so we have high IO uh, calls per second. And it's actually a really, really good point where you see like between orange and green and red, these are the analytics engines and the dynamic thresholds within the real operations that really look at your data and it will flag when things are higher than normal. Okay. Oh. Tuning based on the thresholds. So, uh, so from the database, and this will take a bit of a build here, so we go from database to the virtual chain, the virtual I have a high uh, um, uh, write request per second and high write rate, so it's flagging those. And high utilization, we can look into that separate, but right now it's really high, uh, high disk I.O. Because of our, our previous dashboard, it really looks like disk is what's slowing us down. Here, this particular virtual scene is related to our ESXi host, and this is coming in from the vSphere adapter. So we go from the VM to the ESXi host. Again, very high write operations. And from here, um, we also brought in the hardware layer. So we're looking at the Cisco UCS system, but it doesn't look like there's any issues there with the hardware. And really, that doesn't uh, necessarily apply to uh, a, a virtualization level write issue. So let's keep going. So we can look at the fabric interconnects and then move them. So these, these are the, the ways that the, the, the UCS system communicates the network. Not really finding anything here. We have a so Nexus switch, seems to not really have any issues. But what's interesting because we're talking about storage is down to the, the, the actual data store side. So the data store is being provided by the vSphere adapter. And we can see here that we have a high IO rate, um, high IO operations per second. So we're really driving in and seeing our theme of write operations. And this gets really interesting for me, at least, is the uh, bringing in the actual SAN levels. We're looking at, at the storage hardware. And this is where we have the NetApp Magic Pack. So this, this happens to be one of Bloomberg's most popular ones. And we can make the relationship between VM, down to the data store, down to the volume. And here we have things like write latency being flagged, read and write latency and the write operations, and also over use capacity. So it's getting pretty full. And now to the actual LUN. So the LUN's actually giving us a few more uh, details than even the volume data store can provide about uh, things like latency and throughput and overall timing. So we're able to go through and really what we can do is go down to this UCS. UCSI SCSI, and mm -hmm. from here on this volume, we look at, at this particular system and we can identify a storage issue down to the actual NetApp layer. Wow, okay. okay. So if I understand this correctly, you started with the application, you know, the queries were slow, and then you actually started down to the non level where it's caused to be slow. Correct, correct. Awesome. If, if we wanted to go uh, go even deeper, what we can do is we can go volume. And this is where we go actually uh, uh, show you kind of what some of the objects look like. This is we're bringing in the, uh, unique NetApp, NetApp objects themselves. So we can do all metrics. I like this this view overall. So now with the actual uh, volume, and then in NetApp itself, there are things called aggregates, or similar to like rate groups, or an analog would be like, like a, a disk shelf in most storage arrays. Or down to the actual aggregate level, and here we can even look at the individual drives themselves. So we can get a custom dashboard, or perhaps pull up alerts, and we can get things like percentage busy. You know, we can even look at that. So we ultimately drive from that query all the way down to the actual disk that that query is being run on. Okay, I mean, I've not been an admin in my life, but I've sat with a lot of admins. But I think they would need around around. Tools to to start and do of this. This is really good. I mean, I I can see the value right away. Um, yeah, good, great stuff. Keep uh, if you have more stuff to show. Okay. Yeah. That way. Okay. Well, one a different way to to really look at our our infrastructure and and like you mentioned about the, the whole theme of of twelve tools. That's that's a, a theme we hear over and over again. And where within my previous role where I was in charge of IT operations, that's what we would have to deal with all the time, and tools for all terrible. 
So it's like this where we're looking at the same kind of objects, but we're going from the actual uh, DB instance, in this case, that name OEM 12C. We go, can also see the virtual machine, the host system, down to the UCS blade. And what's so cool about this is now, instead of just looking at those KPIs, I can see the health and alerts. I'm going to pick individual metrics. So this, this is where you start to really dive in, and perhaps you're sitting down now your DBA, your DBA wants to know, to know things like read time or write time or, or overall latch weights and latch timeouts. These are all things that are very important to the actual DBA, but may not be the overall tool that like a vSphere admin would need, but we, we, we have all this provided and we can add that kind of data. Um, we're pulling in the alerts from the actual system itself. We go from here to the virtual machine and a similar idea to see if there's any alerts here, you know, data or connectivity issues or machine has high uh, CPU issues, things like that, and we could look at that. But as we're going through, we could just get a sense of what, what the overall health of our environment looks like. So going from the host system to the UCS blade. And one thing, too, uh, while I'm going through on the UCS blade side, interesting with UCS is, UCS is, is we're going from something that is more application-centric and virtual. Now we're being over to the actual hardware realm and where there can be alerts or notifications if there's any kind of hardware failure. And normally you want to see that, that, uh, that kind of thing within a virtualization focused monitoring tool. So we're trying to bring that, that level of, 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 of awareness in as well. We have the UCS blade, chassis, nexus switch, ultimately down the data store, the net at volumes and LUN. And instead, it's using those same relationships, but from here it's a bit more detailed where you can look at the alerts and perhaps individual metrics uh, as we're going through and looking at, our, at what really constitutes our overall application stack. Awesome. All right. Good. Okay. I've been asking a lot of questions. I mean, I don't know if there are any questions on the chat window. Just check for you. Okay. Thanks for feeling that. So um, one of the other aspects of, of, uh, of vRealize operations is the ability to really look and do, do, do analysis for you. And there's a, there's a full analytics engine based in or built into vRealize operations. So uh, out of the box with a vSphere adapter, it's great at looking at things like ESXi and VMs and data stores and telling when you're going to be running out of space and looking at workloads overall. Um, because we have management packs now that are extending our visibility into the various layers of the app stack, we can start doing some analysis on those and really starting to feed those into the various metrics for based on health here. So uh, I'll, I'll start at the top looking at workload. Uh, workload is kind of based on throughput or other KPIs. Anomalies would be bringing up anything that uh, there may be uh, um, issues coming up with. So here's looking at the overall health state or where the, the overall health state has been uh, degraded. And what's really cool about these, these two particular tabs and for this particular object, but if there's some kind of outage, workload and anomalies may be the, the, the actual place where you could start your troubleshooting process, especially around uh, anomalies. But with this particular scenario, uh, our, we have our disk group and we're looking at capacity. And since uh, when we're looking at capacity, there's really two things that matter. Uh, one of them uh, um, is you know, how, how much capacity is free overall, and uh, the, other, the other thing being um, how much capacity do you have from a, a, a I/O and throughput perspective. For visibility from the I/O and throughput perspective, we already saw that we have very, very high I/O time through our, our other dashboards. So now when we're looking at it from a storage perspective, we can see that we go to capacity remaining. And where we have one terabyte total, and what we're recommending is that this be a terabyte and a half in size. So VROPS is telling us that we should be increasing our size overall of what is available for our workload. When I go to remaining, it's going to be telling us that we are running out of room currently. And so with it, it looks like we're trying to free things up, but we're running out of room and we are currently in the red. Now, with a healthier environment, like most, most of the folks on the, on, the, on the phone would have, I have an environment where this would start to trend upward, where things are looking fine today and operational, but running out of room in the future as, as needs increase and your all uh, capacity is being used by things such as virtual machines. So where this gets really interesting is at, at the actual SAN level, we can do a bit of planning for, for future purchases with, with, with data, so this is really actionable. So within our environment, uh, everything is based on Oracle database, and because of the other workload issues we've 
pad. Um, within our scenario, we're going to be adding extra nodes to the Oracle rack, the Oracle cluster database. So and to do that, since we're running out of room, we have plant purchase an additional shelf for the storage array. So we'll be putting this in the future. And you can see that our shortfall, even though we're cleaning up, is, uh, is totally taken care of by our purchase here. So uh, coming out into the future in our scenario, uh, everything is fine and for the purchase of additional disk shelf. But because we have performance concerns, uh, we're going to be adding an additional node to the Oracle database. A uh, So I'm going to go ahead and add in. And doing so, I can see that we still have a shortfall here, so we need to go back and do a bit of planning or the things we can clean up on the volume. Uh, there's some reconfiguration in the sand, perhaps, or perhaps need to order a larger larger set of uh, disks. You know, we can we can do uh, 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 actionable analysis based on that. Also, this is great because when customers announce them, uh, talk about capacity, they, they have four things. And one is how much I have, how much is used, how much is left, and when will I run out of capacity? So, and with this, uh, so we have not done projects. I, Simon, remind me, I think we have not done projects as one of the webinars uh, in our sessions. And, uh, no, I don't think we've covered it. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah, so that's giving color to people who will be watching this later and who are watching it right now, and if you've not worked on projects, I think this is the best example of how you can use projects uh, for uh, with our ops and for doing capacity planning, where uh, Craig just dem demonstrated that there is a storage issue on the storage is running out, and uh, I know that I'm short storage, and how I can add a project to say, oh, I'm buying storage on November 10th, and buy it, I will kind of take care of that shortfall, but I should also go ahead and put the forecast in for new demand which will be coming in, and that's what he did with the article coming in and which will be virtualized and and as soon as you do that you know that oh maybe the storage which I'm buying on November 10th is not enough and I actually go and order some more racks or shelves at that point. Excellent. I mean I love this example. Yeah, thanks. So one of the things also I wanted to really show is products are really easy to use. I've other, I've used other tools in the past where they, they try to accomplish something but I love it where I'm just going to edit one of our existing projects you can add, and so we're here we're showing we're adding additional nodes and have a description. What's cool is you can say planned or committed, and when we actually go to the point where we're going to lock in and buy that actual shelf and the purchase order has been closed, we can plan in, and what they do is when the, the capacity analytics engine is looking at future uh, growth and what is available, it's actually going to take that, that into account. So we can do some, some trending on that. And then to, to really work with it, um, you could simply put in what are the overall values and really look at, you know, what is going to be used here and the actual dates themselves. And there's various things you can do to change capacity, remove capacity, change overall demand. So simple to get started, very easy to go ahead and plot out what you can do with your environment when it comes to planning for future needs. Well, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and pause here. Are there are there any questions or anything else anybody would like to see with this um, particular vSphere hosted environment? So, guys, if you have a question, you can either use the chat window and ask your question. Or you can also unpause yourself, or you can do that. I'll unpause everyone by the end of the session. So if you have a burning question, it's good to put that in the chat window. Or and just hold on to it, and once we once we open to Q and A at the end of the session, feel free to pitch in. Okay. Um, what are the candle for now? So, oh, I got one, I guess. Yeah. Uh, is there a pack for Dell storage? It looks like uh, what, what the question is coming in at. Um, from the Dell storage perspective, you know, we're we're always adding more and more to our roadmap. We currently don't have any offerings around on that. Um, but if you'd like to follow up with this offline, uh, that's something where we we definitely respond to customer demand as far as as far as adding in uh, targets. And at this point, we're just looking for more and more opportunities. So please follow with us, and, and uh, perhaps we can also take that offline. Okay. On the dashboard I wanted to show, and this was new for I believe uh, six step four. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sunny, with uh, workload utilization. That's right. Okay. 
So yes, it's also cool. Any any object with a capacity uh, of a badge, effectively anything with capacity KPIs, can actually uh, be uh, in important to this this uh, particular dashboard. So what I've done here is I've actually thrown all the different storage objects at it. And what we're actually kind of cool is you can look at all of our different NetApp aggregates. This is the aggregate of disks. And what we like is we have all of our NetApp volumes. So this this could be whatever storage volume you have being monitored here. But we're looking at is uh, utilization. So things that have a lot of capacity issues are going to be over here in the red. And uh, I think that's basically underutilized or perhaps has a lot of free space is going to be over here on this side. And the same thing on disks. So disks are should be pretty even from a, a load distribution standpoint, but it depends how they're configured. And the same thing around LUNs. So this is going to be looking at workload balancing. In the lab, I have a pretty small net array, only about five terabytes. Um, but you know, it, with, within larger environments, we've seen customers with, with hundreds of LUNs, for example. So with that, they'll need to do uh, balancing based on that. And when I go ahead and click on that, that, that particular LUN, uh, it then go ahead, it, it will go ahead and make relationships to the aggregate and the volume it's on, and it will show you the actual workload itself. So here it's showing that uh, we have high workload because of LUN capacity. So basically it's starting to get, to get a little in storage space. So it's just a way to look at your environment and really look at uh, what your, your, what your SAN infrastructure is showing from a capacity standpoint. Yep, I have this one for showing vSphere a construct, but this is a great use of uh, of showing uh, how storage and distribution is from a capacity standpoint. Yeah, nice. Good. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get a bit of a bit of an intro. So uh, we're going to dive into our, our next demo environment and our next set of use cases. So we're going to be looking at monitoring the hybrid cloud within VROps itself. Um, the, the, the first scenario I'd like to target is around the the cloud to cloud migration or perhaps the cloud to cloud work balancing scenario. Um, we're starting to hear more and more about this, where where Amazon and and other other cloud cloud offerings are starting to get more and more traction. And really, what they what they offer is a, a place for expandable workloads um, really grow and meet meet uh, meet ad hoc demand, where you can really look at your IT investment. I'm moving things from a capital expenditure, things such as storage array and servers and networking and everything else, over to an operational expenditure where you where you're only paying per utilization. So it's the workload that, that 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 actually works for, but there are some specialized workloads, especially within the database realm, and that's what we're going to be talking about here and really highlighting. So I have a complete monitoring of AWS workloads down to the the, the level is kind of showing you some some depth of, of workloads, but while I'm going through them, I'll definitely make sure to highlight anything that is really different around hybrid cloud overall. We have a, a really cool use case driven dashboard around geolocation. So as your data is getting spread all over the globe and getting spread across various uh, cloud instances and, and regions, really understanding how healthy are these production applications and how healthy are the things that are really driving your infrastructure, it's very important. And then ultimately the actual topology. So how are how are all of these these things con, uh, connected? Because in our world of IT, things are just getting more and more complicated because we're spreading them across various locations. Ultimately, with that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and dive in. So this is a different demo environment on vRelays Operations 6.5. So on this, we're running our latest and greatest. Uh, what I've done is I've, I've had a similar uh, application stack defined. In our environment, uh, our example customer that we built all this for is a retail company. They, uh, they are doing order processing, and within our, our, our environment, um, order processing is very, very, very important. And so with the holiday rush coming up, uh, the, the IT department is doing some load testing. And what they would like to do is side by side see what some of the hosted offerings could, could really uh, um, offer in terms of performance versus the performance that they're getting on their their current um, their current on-prem uh, database servers. So uh, we'll explore that, that, that this story a bit more when we go through the dashboards. But I'll just show you at a glance what is here. So we have some application servers hosted on Amazon EC2. EC2 is Amazon's electric cloud, so similar to like VMware. We have the databases running on Amazon RDS, and RDS stands for Relational Database Services. 
uh, really well. They're almost like database engines. They really run without a, a virtual machine directly on the Amazon infrastructure itself. We also have table spaces because table space is very important. So we have ordering, stock warehouse, this is where the actual data lives uh, for our, our particular order application. Then ultimately the Amazon region itself and really looking at um, what, what we have as far as what is hosting from a hosting infrastructure. On the VMware side, this is going to look a little bit more familiar to a lot more of the actual the, 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 the vSphere admins. So we have application servers. The data servers, data available space, data volume, and ultimate ESXi servers running in UCS. So what we have is a server infrastructure running on both Amazon and VMware, and we can look at them side by side. So the same advantages that we demonstrated before are gained here by defining these, and um, with this, there's a lot of good, great information with some within some of the previous VROPS webinars, and we can look at the health of the tier and all the different monitored objects. Uh, Underneath that, I'm going to go ahead and go to home. And within our area, what we're doing is we're looking at uh, our, our order processing system, and we are ensuring that our order processing system can really match the influx of orders coming in for the holiday ordering rush. So the department has done a little bit of load testing already, and we look like we're we're, we're trying to run out of out of capacity on the VSP side. So we're, we're we have a couple different options here. One option is to do a a uh, capex investment and looking at things such as as Dell servers, investment into a faster uh, NetApp array or whatever we need to actually speed up our our, our overall um, our overall vSphere infrastructure. But that uh, the, 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 the new hardware may be sitting around for about three quarters out of the year because we're not doing order processing at scale um, throughout the entire year. So that's where things like Amazon RDS can really uh, help us out because we're only going to be paying for what we have and we need to burst into those uh, uh, extra demand times. So what are two different database instances? This is the same transactional database. I'm going to go highlight MySQL prods. This is my one that's uh, running on my vSphere infrastructure. Here I can see within my load testing environment, uh, database, things like updating warehouse and looking at customers, and I can look at overall calls. So what I'm looking at uh, here is I'm looking at total execution time and per average execution time. And I can see here we have almost 20 seconds for our slowest query overall. And uh, here I can see average lock time, rows examined. So really, Get the overall query, query query performance on the particular system itself. So slowest uh, query is executing at about 20 seconds. When I go on this one, this IP 10.15, this is a yes instance. So for again, my top 10 slowest queries. I can look at my average execution time, and here it's below four seconds. So you're from 20 second execution time to 3.76. So that's quite a dramatic difference when I'm running the exact same load on both MySQL systems, one RDS hosted and one one hosted on my my, my vSphere system. We to get. I'm just trying to understand. So is this the scenario where a customer was running out of? And you mentioned that in the beginning, but it's trying to clear out. So the customer was running out of capacity in his existing vSphere environment, and wanted and he then moved the some of the servers to RDS. Uh, then see that the query time is improving because of the fact that. Uh, uh, of course, he has new capacity, which you got in our OPEX model, or pay as you go, because of that high day season burst. Correct. Correct. Yeah, it, within our scenario, they they are they are running the exact same load generation, and what we're doing is we're we're doing a bit of load testing between, uh, between both both of our various application stacks. Got it. Okay. All right. Great. With my slowest query structure, I can uh, click on um, our, our slowest query, which based on this heat map is query number one. Here, again, I can see that same kind of information. It's the easier way to consume it. Um, average execution time, 20 seconds here on the RDS, or on the VMware side, the, v, the, the vSphere hosted side. And then also when I go to the RDS hosted side, I'm looking at an average call time of about two seconds. Um, with just a quick way to compare and contrast what is going on between your, your various clouds. All right. That's it. Okay. 
Good. So uh, expanding out our use case, uh, we're looking at uh, the other database workloads which are being monitored on RDS. So what I'm going to go through is, is I'm going to show you actually a bit of a custom dashboard that was uh, created around a very specific use case. This is actually a dashboard similar to what a VRS admin may create uh, um, with, with, uh, with pulling in information from RDS and pulling in information on databases that, that is being monitored both on-prem and both uh, on the Amazon RDS cloud. And I'm not sure if everybody recalled, and then from the recording, recording it may date this, there was an outage about a month ago within uh, U.S. East of all the different Amazon services. So what our, our, our admin did here was use the topology widget and looking at the various items that are hosted uh, within private cloud, U.S. East, and then our, our backup region, which is U.S. West, they're able to break all the different objects for all of our production database instances. Here we have the weather map. So looking at this, it's going to scale through scale through time within the defined sampling period. So maybe over the last day, and we see if there's anything trending towards red. Uh, but the thing is looking at anomalies. So if there's anything uh, pulling up as far as events or other alerts coming out of the UC's data center, and here we have that. Also, uh, technically, we have all of our local database instances here. So perhaps I want to look at uh, a a local version of the transaction database. And we could also go over here and we can look at the Oracle system, which is hosting something similar. It's another um, a transaction database. So I can and look at the health quickly of the databases hosted within my local environment. And here you can see there's some alerts. And then my database is ho hosted within my Amazon RDS environment. So I can just quickly look at, at the overall health of um, the, at, at where everything is hosted. Yeah. Other ones which I want to to, to show up here, the Amazon RDS storage and workload investigation. So we have all the different RDS instances sorted by storage capacity and instance. So I can look into see um, which ones are basically starting to run out of room because within RDS itself, you 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 do pay based on storage, and we we do care about the same kind of metrics that you also care about within your traditional vSphere infrastructure, so like network storage capacity, storage throughput, and overall CPU also matter within this environment. So we have all of our RDS instances uh, being listed here, we have, and we can sort by capacity. We have region that we're selecting, so we have things at the high level like disk-free network throughput, and really a nice tactical dashboard that we, again, we've matched up data from various manager packs. And we're looking at things like workloads, so we have storage capacity, CPU, and health, and we're all KPIs, and, and ultimately looking at the workload balance um, between our, our various RDS instances. Uh, to me, uh, especially when you when you say workload balance, uh, you're kind of, uh, kind of measuring how much you're utilizing each of these instances, whether on premise or off premise. Yeah. Okay. So just to get some details around uh, how, how do we fetch this data, so can you kind of give us a flavor of how this is possible through VROPS and uh, the Blue Medora management pack? Sure. Uh, excellent question. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the the administration area and go ahead and go to solutions, where here we have all the various manager packs that, that is installed for this particular environment. So with, with one, we're going to go to Amazon RDS. And here it says, it says quite out on a collection of failed because we're, we're running in what's called historic mode. It's like a demo mode. But I'll show you what some of the, the actual um, uh, administration looks like. So, no key. <laughs> but uh, all you simply have to do is put in your access key, your, your region, and then your, your actual credentials. And then from here, hit test connection and save, and then everything will, will start collecting after you, you get your licensing set up. Okay. Very easy. So, We're actually. Oh, yeah. So basically, you just have the RDS account, and then you come in and configure with the key. That's it. Uh, within that, within about five minutes, you're going to you're going to start collecting. There's there is a a particular API service called CloudWatch that 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 Amazon has, and that's really what is providing the majority of our metrics. Got it. Okay. Is that is that um that component 
if I remember rightly, with the, the management pack for AWS, I think the VIA provides the only, I suppose, thing you need to be aware of when looking at that is I think there's a cost, and please correct me if I'm wrong, if it, you get basic metrics, but I think the more metrics you expose or the more data that you're pushing down, it actually adds to the cost when doing that. Is that correct, or am I thinking of something else? Correct. With, with all of our Bloomador offerings, we're getting a, a fairly limited set of metrics out of this. Uh, I do know with the Imagine Pack for AWS, which I also have installed here, you can actually go down to the individual EC2 um, disk level, and for some of those things, you actually have to turn on certain monitors or certain mm -hmm. All right, I'm looking at it in, in some way, really move your issues out in a leaf sphere, right? I mean, if you look at 50% of the metrics are actually solving 90% of my issues. For those 10 to corner cases where I go to the stream metrics and start looking into the all metrics section. But yeah, I mean, if, you, if my use cases are solved with limited set of data, I would probably go with that and then I can scale up if I need to. I mean, that the, the customers that I uh, implemented it with had needed to, to go crazy with it. It's, it's basically given them what they needed, but I wanted to just add that in there so people were aware of that. Um, you know, if they call it and they find that there aren't so many metrics, there are reasons for it, and the impact if they want to, to have more. Yep, that's a great point, Simon. Hey, this is Brock. I think it's important to, to note that we have some different connection protocols, right? So for, for Amazon and the management packs that you highlighted here, we're, we're using the uh, web services. But, but, you know, things like UCS, uh, and this networking, which you're showing in your screen currently, you know, connect directly to UCS Manager in, in the case of UCS, or for Cisco networking, uh, we're just connecting VS and MP to the specific switches uh, in, in mind. So I don't know that you have any databases there, but here for no. relational databases, you're just connecting via JDBC to the instances. And for big databases, we're most often connecting to uh, APIs. So it depends on the technology that, that people are interested in, um, and, and we connect to those. But we, we leverage uh, various ports and protocols, uh, generally supporting uh, you know, multiple protocols, and connect from there. Excellent, Brock. One of the things that I wanted to, to show within that uh, first use case where we're looking at query, query, query performance, we're looking at MySQL, which has what the, the actual instances look like here. So this is one that we're, we're hooking up to a RDS hosted one, and this is one where we're ho uh, hooking up to one which is hosted within our local environment. But because our networking extends to a, a VPC with an Amazon RDS, um, we're just hooking up in the exact same manner. So the same port, 3306 here in RDS, and 3306 here within our local environment, and we're, for locations we're able to hook up uh, with our, our, our specific MySQL manager pack. Right. So I, I think the point is that, um, which I want to kind of uh, summarize from this is, I mean, and the reason I wanted to go here is, is because when you look at the, the amount of data which we are bringing in and the kind of problems we are trying to solve with that data, uh, it looks complex, right? I mean, I, I know if I need to do that with the, with, 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 without the ops and Blue Medora packs, then I have seven or eight tools to get the individual information and then use my notepad to kind of do that correlation as to what metric went up and down um, in each tool and kind of come to an answer, which can take days in some cases. So, so I absolutely appreciate the fact that it is simple to configure and um, you guys have already built some of the, some of the business logic or application logic in the out-of-the-box dashboards. And then uh, and you can configure more. I think there's a specific corner case which you want to meet. Yeah. It had something extra to that. It's not just that you you have all the systems, but often those systems are being monitored or maintained by individual teams. So when you want to pull it all in, you have a single point of reference for all the teams. So if someone's troubleshooting one point, that might not be a part of, of like the area of responsibility. They can still get an indication and then, you know, dialogue with the teams. 
because um, you know, have your DB teams, you're going to have your network teams. So this, this brings it all in and, and makes it a, a very useful tool in terms of uh, you know your to get to resolution quicker, other than I have to phone the DB team. Oh, it's not their fault. I need to phone the network team. You know, all of that kind of gets washed away, or at least um, I mean, I just sped hear, up. And you polish the uh, the uh, being politically correct instead of saying. People will stop playing the blame game. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> <doing>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good stuff. No, but, but Simon, it's a great point that you bring up. Uh, I've, I've been in the industry for a couple decades, and we've always chased a single pane of glass, right? The single source of truth. And in Bob's extended by Bloomdora is as close as I've seen to a single pane of glass from the top of your IT stack to the bottom. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree. I was just kidding. That's P A N E. <laughs> I, I kind of don't like single pane glass because sometimes you it's difficult, right? It's not possible to get everything in. But yeah, you guys have the job over here showing that uh, to come come to life, basically. So I appreciate that. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. So a couple of other things so as we're going through within Amazon RDS itself. If I go to the actual uh, instance analysis, uh, this is one of the things too where we're, 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 we're coming from the on-prem and the more traditional uh, vSphere uh, and, and storage array and actual server hardware backed world. There are concepts here to really look at, but really what we're talking about is the exact same stuff that makes a performance. So capacity, CPU utilization, uh, latency, read operations, think that. It's, 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 it's kind of nuts and bolts when it comes to IT. So what here is the Amazon RDS instance analysis. So we're looking at all the different databases that are being hosted by RDS. I can choose one by read latency, by allocated storage. So uh, the, the larger it is, the more storage it has, and also the darker, meaning the, the more uh, latency it has. Selected that, we can see that the disk read and write, write metrics, so similar to what we saw within our first stack, perhaps uh, troubleshoot down and really look at if there's any kind of write uh, um, uh, queries or anything really putting a lot of write operations and a lot of issues there. But what with this? So from here you go and you can actually look at the, the actual properties of the particular RDS incidents. And this information is really important, especially when you're starting to really deep dive and really getting into troubleshoot RDS itself. Properties class db.t2.medium, this actually defines what kind of sources are available to the particular database instance itself. And so if you want to spend more money with Amazon, you can actually upgrade this to a higher tier. Um, so it says medium, so you can go uh, all, the way up, uh, all the way up to high. Um, you can also have things that are just SSD uh, hosted only. And this is that's what that's really telling us here. The other thing that's very important to note is this is set up within the property and the license model of bring your own license. So looking at doing um, any kind of compliance, perhaps based on what we've seen in previous VR Ops webinars, we can create a custom report with just the properties and the names of all the RDS instances and all the different license models. So we can see that even though we are moving over to RDS, we set the license things as if it's part of anything else we've, uh, that we've ever had within our infrastructure. And so that's from a compliance standpoint. This is also interesting here is we can look at a number of database connections and also the CPU credit utilization to see how much is being used as far as what we are actually paying. Um, things like are these, these dashboards that you're walking us through right now, are these the ones that are out of the box when you install the management pack? Um, the, the ones I'm walking now, yes, they are. The, the, the custom dashboard where I showed the uh, map widget and then the other one with the workbook balancing, that's like matching up various dashboards. So those are those are really custom. But the majority of what I'm showing today actually is, is straight out of the box. Great. Mm -hmm. Other thing to note, so this is kind of interesting too, um, with, within RDS you may have your, your data hosted within multiple regions. So for the majority of our stuff is within U, US East, it happens to be the closest to our Grand Rapids, Michigan location. But we also have a backup running over in um, the US West within the Oregon side. And both of those we can see what is the most popular. 
But where they get really interesting is in a large organization where you're spanning throughout the world, and perhaps doing load balancing, you at a glance quickly see what is the most popular. We have CO2 and storage capacity. So click on these, and here I have all the different instances, these are database instances, and actually different database flavors. If you if you note the the uh, names I have here, like Oracle, MSQL, <laughs> even our odd license server, it's an internal box, uh, MySQL, Aurora, and so on. We can really see what's going on uh, across even different different vendors of of, uh, of the various databases. And this is all from within one one management pack within our RDS management pack. Um, so since we're hooking up to Amazon, we can pull anything. What about this is I can go click on MSQL. And I'm already getting a lot of good information about uh, the R the region itself, so I can see things such as latency and throughput, and perhaps I get some more information on this and de get some detail. Um, you can click, and it will like, pull this out, and we can look at uh, CPU utilization. And let this load, and what this this actually takes a little bit to load within my demo environment, just because of the way I have it provisioned. And here I can actually see all the different relationships to a particular instance. And then from there you can see uh, uh, information down to the actual uh, table space uh, level two. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and click on the object, do object detail, show you really how relationships work. So when we're talking about things that are hosted on vSphere, they're related back to the virtual machine. But with yes, we have a different object to relate to, and that's the actual RDS system itself. So what we'll do here is we'll go to all metrics, the object relationship, I can see that within the RDS region, or normally this would be like our vSphere instance, we have the RDS instance, and this would be uh, more of a similar analog to like the virtual machine, we have actual Microsoft SQL Server instance. So if we're monitoring this with the RDS, we we're monitoring this with the Bloomadora uh, manager pack for uh, uh, Microsoft SQL, and we can get a lot of information even, even all way down to the actual query level as well. So it's a little bit of a different paradigm going into the Amazon RDS space, but we're trying to extend the way the relationships work so we get that same kind of value of full stack visibility between both uh, between both sets of, of, of a hybrid cloud location. All right. I'm too digest because now you've taken me inside Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, Amazon Aurora query analysis, this is just showing off that uh, uh, Amazon Aurora can also be monitored. Amazon Aurora is really interesting where basically it's abstracting it even one level more where before we have RDS database engines, in this case, you're running your, your, your database, your actual database data in the database itself on Amazon Aurora engine. Amazon's taking care of even that part for you. And from here, you have query level monitoring. Uh, on this, and here we also used up some of the newer features within VROP 6.5 to do some syntax highlighting. So here we see our, our same type of load where we're looking at uh, order processing, but the same metrics, so average time, every row sent, calls, and whatnot. And the idea being that we still have full deep monitoring, even though this is abstracted away and cloud hosted, we still need to maintain uptime, we still need to track if there are any kind of issues, and it gives us the proper tool set to, to actually do that. So just just looking at that, um, you got the selected query. I mean, my DB knowledge is pretty limited, but is something that you've chosen from data that's come in, or have you actually put the text file or a widget? Um, what really is that all about? I'm just curious about that that particular widget. Sure. Uh, we're actually using a view within VMware, um, via, via within within VROPS itself, to add the to add the syntax highlighting. But it's really the only thing unique about it. It's actually just a, a, a simple text widget, and we are pulling in data from the RDS instance itself. And in this case, we're looking at at, at Amazon Aurora, and I can go ahead and expand this. So we have to break out the queries themselves. As as objects, so we're pulling them in directly off the actual uh, Aurora API. Cool, actually. Um, I can think of uh, just some DB DBAs that I worked with in the past would, would be eaten that up in terms of, yeah, they, you know, traditional guys who worked on SQL, they'd be looking at SQL, but if you've got a tool like this, which can monitor multiple things, and you can quickly look at a query, 
I don't know how fast that would be for DBAs, but that, that's got to be good. Yeah, definitely. That's also what we're hearing more and more from um, uh, uh, customers, especially, again, within the hybrid scenario. VRS almost always starts as a tool because somebody purchased uh, Visa, which is great. You can do a lot of virtualization with it. But because of these management packs and various extensions, you can really adapt it to wherever your infrastructure is going. Um, the other two I want to mention around Aurora is the table analysis. So start to a database like the, you would host here, you want to look at performance. So from that, you look at the query side. And then when you're looking at the, the, the underlying table space and data itself, uh, we can look at the actual uh, table. So this is more looking at the overall space consumed. And we're also looking at, at the actual underlying I.O. performance. So things like table health, read weight, write weight, and so on, and get a lot of information there. Even down to the actual statements being processed. And then ultimately, overall topology of where is that being stored within within Amazon itself. So it's giving you exact tools you need again to really dive into that low level when there are real production issues. Sounds good. Well, I'll go ahead and pause there. Is there any other use cases or, or uh, any questions from our audience uh, where we can explore with any hybrid cloud, or we can look at the the other the, the other use cases on, on our other demo stack? So a little earlier, Daniel Garcia asked a question about uh, Dell storage, and uh, he sort of clarified it in the chat window, and he referred to actually to, to Dell EMC. So okay, I'd like right. to know that we support uh, both Max File and Block, uh, mm -hmm. as well as Extreme IO and VMAX. So uh, we'll highlight that a little bit later uh, in our TDS slide. Excellent. Well, we can go ahead and uh, move forward within our, our presentation here. Uh, Brian, take it away. Sure. Thanks, Craig. So this is uh, just a graphical illustration of, of, of sort of where we play, right? So when you're in VROP, uh, you start, you're not really sure where, where VMware uh, leaves off and, and Blue Medora sort of catches on. So uh, this shows where that happens. So VMware plays in the cloud and virtualization layer, sort of. You know, I host VMs, data stores, things like that. A great job. Uh, we play outside that layer. So above it in applications and databases, I showed some SQL stuff, MySQL and Oracle, and then below the virtual layer in the compute network and storage. So uh, Craig, could you jump to the next slide? Sure. Okay, perfect. So this is a slide I was referring to uh, a little bit earlier. So this is our menu, as I call it, our TBS packages, our true visibility suite. So we have our packages licensed just VROPS does. Uh, so we have standard, advanced, and enterprise, uh, as well as a connectors pack. So our standard uh, will will just get you uh, some compute and storage, advanced, and networking, uh, converged, and hyper-converged. Uh, and then TBS Enterprise uh, gets you everything. So TBS Enterprise would get you all 38 of our management packs and connectors, uh, everything from Cisco, LEM, CHP uh, into relational databases as well as uh, bases. And you see in orange there, would, those would be our connectors. So uh, you know, earlier we talked about uh, in VOPS, your single source of truth, and their management packs allow you to do that. So in this case, we would be pulling in uh, performance and capacity metrics as well as natively generated events from IM, SCOM, uh, NIOS, OEM, NPM, any of those tools uh, into V-Realize operations. So uh, the DMC VMAX, VNX, and Extreme IO management packs are highla highlighted here. Uh, we're always curious to, to hear if People are interested in, in management packs we don't have represented, uh, technologies that might be on the horizon or uh, being used by clients. So, uh, Craig, do you have anything to add to the TBS packages that, that Blue Medora offers? Yeah, I want to give a little bit of theory, too, around TBS. So TBS stands for True Visibility Suite. And kind of applying this variety of product that we have listed here to what you saw today, um, really, the 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 overall concept is it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, hardware or what kind of vendor or what kind of database workload you have within your environment. Blue 
you covered. So our, our overall theme. So it doesn't matter if you're running Microsoft SQL on HP Compute, backed by all Extreme I.O. We still make the same kind of relationships. The custom dashboards, which I showed you earlier, and the same kind of use cases apply. So, well, really what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it easy so that virtually anybody could could, could could gain value and full stack visibility within our, our true visibility suite. It's a fabulous point, Craig. And, and generally, we're coming out with two or three uh, management packs every quarter. Uh, there's fun and exciting stuff on the horizon, so uh, we look for this to expand. Definitely. Uh, we don't have them on, on the slide right now, but we have things coming out around um, JBoss and Tomcat. Uh, we're also going to we also have on our roadmap uh, to be released here soon is a HP3 PAR management pack and some extensions there. So stay tuned for more information there. As um, one from uh, Azure this week. Uh, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, because um, you just showcased uh, you know the hook into AWS and for me. So is, is, is the, this week. Uh, awesome. Yeah, with that, not not to go too too far in depth, but with the the Azure, there's actually two different pieces of it. We monitor the Azure platform, so if you're running any kind of virtualized workloads on Azure, we have that covered. But there's also a Azure hosted Microsoft SQL. It's very similar to like Aurora or RDS, where it's a database engine, and we have a separate set of dashboards and use cases and monitoring built around that. So we have everything covered that you could, could potentially be running around Azure. Excited. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, so just uh, I'm coming in here from, from, you know, using questions I've had from customers, and um, VROPS does a heck of a lot of stuff, and it's placed in a really great position as a modeling tool that can hook into so many solutions. Uh, and the elephant in the room, or rather the elephant that wasn't in the room, absent as it were, was the ability to really, you know, to Azure. So the fact that that option is coming from you guys, that's just great, because um, I know there will be interest in that. Excellent. Okay, you wanna walk us through a little bit of our company history? Sure. Yeah. So uh, Bloomador has a strong partnership with VMware. Uh, our company is, is roughly 10 years old, uh, started by an ex-IBMer in, in the ITM, OEM sort of arena. But in 2014 is, is when we uh, ended up with VMware. Uh, we started working on our first management packs. 2015, uh, VMware became in Bloomadora, they have a seat on our board, so our partnership uh, couldn't be stronger. Um, in 2016, we really sort of uh, expanded our growth from five management packs uh, years ago. 38 management packs will be 39 uh, later this week. And uh, just this month, we announced um, that we are launching as part of VMware's CAN program. And uh, you're also our TBS packages as part of the uh, VSphere optimization assessment program. So we worked with lots of clients doing VOAs. Uh, we partnered with VMware on those to not only uh, sort of demo and trial VROPs as, as a platform itself, but our management packs as extensions. So. Um, so we're kind of getting things wrapped up. We don't, don't have a lot of time towards the end, but we have a few things we wanted to, to kind of go through overall. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about the VMware Solutions Exchange, which is where you can really look at the variety of, of, uh, of, of solutions that are out there. Touched on a bit at the configuration of a manager pack, but we can talk about installation. It's very, very easy. Let's also we touch on some of the other extensions out there. So what's available on the VMware Solutions Exchange? So the Solutions Exchange is a great place to start. Uh, and really looking at, 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 at what is available overall as far as extensions to within your, your vSphere environment. Uh, but what you go is within the cloud operations solution. So you can see here right away we have some featured manager packs and, and featured things. And this is where things kind of correspond to those different true visibility suite uh, diagrams that Brock had run through. We have standard, advanced, and enterprise. And this is where you can really start to, to look to see what is available overall within your environment. I also want to look at something such as as uh, net, quickly look and see what are the various offerings there. Overall, so here showing me you know E-series and NetApp storage for for fast. So I encourage everybody to um, 
Also, also looking at uh, Boomador.com and some of our materials there, which could, could show you what's available. Uh, there are a lot of extensions that are created by VMware themselves, which are definitely complementary here and um, are great. In fact, one of the ones that was mentioned was the AWS uh, uh, integration that, that VMware has created. So do you, do, you, do you have a little bit of experience using the Magipack for, for AWS? Yeah, I've used it uh, certainly for a couple of customers. Um, it's quite a simple to deploy. Um, I can't try to think if there's any real or... Not really. It, it's as simple as it gets. It'll just hook in very simply. You can configure it. Uh, i trying to think now. I think the last iteration, and it may have changed, in its recent versions, you had to alter a config file, but hooking it up, it, it just it works very well, uh, very quickly. I've seen any issues with it, and it's it's sort of an ongoing process. I think they're developing it more and more, but it's no better than that than me. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's a. <laughs> I'm just passing that over, buddy. No, it's a good pack. It, it works really well. Good, good. And then so so with that, I would also um, recommend if you're if you're looking at AWS monitoring, um, you know perhaps you want to look at just anything Amazon related uh, or the Boomador RDS manager pack we have as well. So I'll just bring a lot of awareness there. Um, that. So that's a good 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 place to start. I, I link to a YouTube video so so the the folks following along could watch that. But that's the basic installation and configuration of a UCS manager pack. But the same idea applies. Go ahead and do a very brief demo here. So at our, our manager packs, they're they're installed in the exact same manner. When you download any manager pack, it is a small pack file, typically underneath 10 megabytes. You browse for the pack file to import. You just go ahead and click on it. Um, you click load, next, finish. It's within about five clicks, everything is installed. If you do have your ops installed in the cluster mode, it may take a little bit longer as it passes out the actual bits and binary across the actual cluster nodes themselves, and be it to get it installed. And then once it's here, from a configuration perspective, it's going to be a little different based on whatever the actual thing is that you're monitoring. But all, all the ops manager packs are set up to work remotely, so they're making remote connections, and we don't really worry about agents or really that much configuration, even of the end targets, side of a few things like username and password. So for here, we're at the Oracle database adapter. After I need the host, the port, the actual database SID, and then creds, that connection. Um, but like uh, Brock had mentioned with UCS, we're hitting the actual UCS manager itself, so host protocol credentials, and it's pretty to get one of these things going. If anyone's uh, configured anything from um, uh, the more traditional monitoring suites like uh, IBM Tivoli or, or Oracle Enterprise Manager, those may take half an hour to, to configure something or perhaps even longer. This is so much easier. And then within VROPS, it just connects, collects everything remotely. You think it's important to highlight that, that, that we are in the list, right? These agents are being installed in your VROPS node or your VROPS cluster. Uh, they're not being installed on any target. So, you know, it's, they're easy to maintain, uh, efficiently installed and, uh, you know, actively capturing data from the target and pulling it back. Mm -hmm. Just jumping in there from an administration point of view, um, one thing I'll say when it comes to doing map packs in general, um, if you have a particularly large environment and the remote collectors are quite desperate uh, for different separate geolocations, is that something that you have just built or um, plan to do so, it's not unusual for the process of the installation of the management pack to take a little while, um, especially over sort of more high latency links. Um, so one tip I would give, while this is the traditional place to install a management pack, there's the an interface, uh, which you typically wouldn't go into, but you go in there and deploy uh, um, the max from there. What that gives you when you're deploying it is actually a status across all of the nodes and remote collectors while it's doing that. Um, that that's something I've sort of hovered over before for larger builds because I've wanted to know what's going on. Of course, if there was an issue, it kind of tells you where something has fallen down. And typically, it's not the management pack that's fallen down. It might be a network issue or something else. So here we go here. If you, if you click on the software update option on the left, you can see here the last update that was uh, applied, 
and while it's doing the, the software update, whether it's a patching or a management packet, it'll actually give you the status, I think it's between one and nine, um, of how far it's got for all of the nodes and remote coders, so it's super useful. Um, but yeah, that, that's a sort of a, a tip I would give. Yeah, that, that's a great point, and I have, I have run into uh, situations where you know, we have disparate uh, geos and uh, some latency issues, and it can take a bit for a management pack to, to hit some remote collectors. And uh, this is a really useful GUI uh, to just kind of show you our pro progress. One, oh, sorry, just saying that um, uh, one, so for, for customers who would watch this later or for somebody who wants to try these management packs, so there are two things which I recommend with, uh, to customers is one is if you want to try something, then do it in a dev environment. Try and see what, 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 what you're getting and whether it's help or use cases. And if everything is fine, then then go ahead and before adding it to production, make sure your application, or which is VROps itself, is right sized. Because what you're essentially doing is you're bringing in more metrics, uh, and these metrics have to live somewhere, and they have to be fetched and and rendered and so on and so forth. So I, I know that Blue Medora has a very nice sizing spreadsheet, which allows you to kind of size to make sure your underlying infrastructure is solid. Now uh, you're building it up because you don't want your application monitoring application to go down because it was not right sized. Uh, so that's that's something which is uh, critical and which we have been like telling since episode one, I believe, because we want to make sure that you size correctly for uh, for all the monitoring that you're doing. Yeah, thanks, thanks, great for that up. So it's a guide which you have over there. Yep, we actually have a, a Bloomador TVS sizing guide. So we have sizing guide on uh, all of our different manager packs. Um, I recommend first, the way this is really meant to be run is you have the VROps uh, sizing guide here, and there is a there is a Excel sheet based on uh, what version of VROps you have. And in the last column, there is a a place to put, to put additional objects coming in. So between the TVS sizing guide here and the sizing guide here, you can actually um, see how how many um, cores you're going to need or what kind of storage is actually going to be used. From an estimated perspective, so then you have everything you need from sizing your VRES operations uh, structure. Perfect. That, that's, that's really helpful. Thanks for that up. Uh, uh, on. All right. So we have five minutes uh, at this moment. Uh, do you have? Oh, you have more slides to cover. You want to cover? Uh, yeah, I'll just quickly run through these. So, what are other type of extensions? There's VMware Endpoint Operations Agents. So these are installed locally on the operating system. They're basically Java based. And with some, some OS information relate back to the VM. There's also extensions for that. Bloomador has done a, a little bit. Uh, but generally, uh, where I recommend these be used is for things such as AIX or Solaris, where you may not be running on VMware virtualization and you can bring monitoring in. Um, log Insight's really cool. You could probably do a whole separate webinar on this. And it's bringing in log data. And it actually relates back into VLAS operations. And also some content uh, packs where you could they're, they're, they have their own set of extensions and there's some relationships there. I know you guys did a good piece of uncovering this within your 6.5 webinar. And then the other piece of this is VMware vRealize Business for Cloud, which is doing some cost analytics where VMware updates some cost tables and you can look, look at what is um, uh, what kind of cost, uh, information you have about your internal infrastructure. So just going to hit some other variety there. I'll just put those slides in so that people could do some research on their own if they want to start digging in. From a resources perspective, well, I recommend taking a look at what's in the Solutions Exchange, look at the, the installation and configuration of a manager pack. And our, our website, we actually have a Boomador product matrix, which is a list of every single thing we actually create. So outside of the regular uh, pages we have around true visibility, which is great, um, we can just get a, a direct listing here and get a good set of information on the overview and different presentations. And uh, ultimately, um, go ahead and try it out. So if you go to bloomador.com slash VROps, we have a lot of good information on uh, trying all of our manager packs. And our sales staff, like, like Brock here, would be more than happy to give you a demo and, and uh, help, help getting things going where you can see this working within your, your internal infrastructure. Great. So, so this, this is good stuff, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, and, and, and thanks, Craig and Brock. I know that you guys
guys put up all this all this demos in a very very short notice. So thank you for doing it. I'm sure a lot of consumers would appreciate what you guys have done today. Uh, I, I do have a survey as well as we always do uh, this year at least, uh, and would appreciate if you could probably go ahead and uh, give your feedback. Uh, so those are the blogs where you will have the recording. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, some of the Blue Medora blogs will also have that recording going in uh, because. Uh, it covers everything what you guys do today. So, so survey link will be on those blog posts as well in case you do not have your pen and you don't want to screenshot and type later. Uh, I can put it on the chat window as well. Probably if you could put it on the chat window, great, then people will be able to uh, respond. And later on, when you view the recording on those blogs, you will respond as well. And we appreciate your feedback because we do want to know if you want to see more of uh, what we are doing. And what are the specific topics on this webinar series which you want to which you want to be on? So Blue Blue for example, was one of the requests which I got from a lot of customers, and uh, hopefully uh, they will love what they what we did today. So with that, I think we are the two minutes uh, for any questions. So any final questions, comments, thoughts? Unmute everybody just in case uh, you want not type and speak. Okay, everybody is unmuted. So, if you have any questions, please do. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's like we don't have uh, any questions, so I think we are good. And if you ha if I get any follow up questions, uh, I know your email addresses, so expect some emails from me. <laughs> All right. Thank you once again, and you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.